We are already at the fifth episode of this new Unity XR Toolkit series and after previously talking about how to set up a VR player with end presence and locomotion system, I want to focus now on VR interaction. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to interact, grab and use an object. So without further ado, let's get started. And as always, if you'd like to support the channel and have access to the source code of all of these videos with exclusive content like this one on how to make your own mini golf VR game, you can join the community on Patreon, link in the description. Okay, so we are back where we were at the end of last episode, but I made a little fix before recording this video. You see, in the last episode, the two teleportation rays were always showing, even when we were not pressing on the trigger button, which will be super annoying when interacting with objects later on. So to fix this, I've made a new component here on the XR region called Activate Teleportation Ray. So this script is super simple, let me just open it for you. As you can see, for each end, it will simply check that the action is above a certain value and activate the teleportation or not. And if we go back to Unity, I've simply dragged the right and left teleportation ray game object and used this activate value action for each end. And now, if I click on play, as you can see, the teleportation still works, but only show up when I press just a little bit on the trigger button. And I should have shown you guys this in the previous video, sorry about that, but now that we got that out of the way, let's see how to interact with an object. So to interact with an object, we need an interactor and an interactable. An interactor set the type of interaction that we want, and an interactable say how the object will answer to this interaction. A good example that we already made is this teleportation system. The ray is in fact an interactor that has for interactable the teleportation area that we added. But for this video, we'll have a look at the XR Direct Interactor. So let's select both our hands, click on Add Component, and search for XR Direct Interactor. There you go. So this interactor will let us interact with object that enters a certain zone near our hands. So to define this zone, Let's add this time a sphere collider and set it to is trigger. We can define the radius of this zone, so, but to keep a kind of precise interaction, let's reduce it to 0.1. Perfect. Now the interactor is set up, let's focus on the interactable. As it's almost a tradition in this kind of video, let's first create a table to easily interact with the object. I'm going to right click in the scene, 3D object, cube, Reset its position to 0, 0, 0, move it a bit forward and out of the ground and scale it on the X and Z axis. There you go, this looks like a table to me. We can even create a new material called white and drag it to our new table. Now let's create an interactable. As I said, there are multiple kinds of interactable, but I want to start with something simple. So let's create another cube, rename it simple interactable. We can already change its size to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and move it above the table. I'm going to create another material, but red this time, and drag it to this cube. We can add a rigid body to this cube to make it use physics, which is needed for detecting a contact with the direct interactor. And finally, we can add the star of the show, a XR simple interactable component. And as you can see in the settings, it needs a collider reference, but as the collider is sitting on the same game object, the script will add it automatically. But keep that thing in mind when adding this kind of component. So this does not seem like much, but just like this, we have made an object that will react to our direct interactor. And if we go below, we can see in the interactable event list, that we can detect when an interactor over, exit or select this game object. So let's test this. In the over enter, let's click on the plus button, drag our cube there and navigate to mesh renderer material. And now drag another material like the white material that we just made earlier, for example. This will create an event that will change the material of this cube when we over it. So let's do the same for the over exit. We can right click on the previous event, copy and paste it below in over exit, but this time set back the material to red. And to test this even more, Let's do the same in select entered. Right click, past, create another new material, rename it yellow and change its color to yellow. And now drag it to this event. Now we have set up some event that should trigger when interacting with this cube. So let's see how this works by clicking on play. And there you go guys, as you can see, when I over the cube with one of my hands, the color of the cube changed, but even more, if I press on the grip button, the color changed as well, but to yellow. 
And this is how you can interact with an object and create response using the interactable. Not just change the color of the object, of course, but anything that we want. And a good example of that is to be able to grab the cube. For a grab system, we could simply write a script to change the position of the object when it's selected. But good news for us, Unity has already done the job with its XR grab interactable component. Let me show you. So let's duplicate our cube, rename it grab interactable, remove the simple interactable, and instead add a XR grab interactable component. Already, if we click on play, as you can see, we can grab the cube. This is super cool. Now, if we leave play mode and take a better look at this component, we can see it has still the same properties as the simple interactable, but we also have settings to change the throw, for example, or to smooth the movement. But the most important in this component is here, the movement type. So to show you the difference, I'm going to name this cube Grab Interactable Instantaneous, duplicate the cube, and rename this one Grab Interactable Kinematic. Change its movement type to Kinematic, and do this once again with the name Grab Interactable Velocity, and with the movement type set to Velocity Tracking. There you go, you should be able to have three cube now, and to better differentiate these three cube from the simple interactable, let's select them all, press R, and scale them down just a little bit. Now, if I click on play, you can better understand the difference. The instantaneous follow exactly the position of my hand. This is because it directly uses the transform position to move it, but this means also that it will not use physics to move. So for example, if I press it to the second cube, you can see that the collision is really weird with this one, but if I take the second cube with kinematic movement, the collision is way better, and this is because the movement here is using a kinematic rigid body. A kinematic rigid body can apply physics to other objects, but is not moved by them. That's why I can still go through the table while holding this cube, but this is where the third cube comes into action. As you can see, the velocity tracking moves the cube using a non-kinematic rigid body, and this means that this cube will now move using physics, but still collide with your scene when you move it around. This is, in my opinion, the best option of the three. Now that we know how to grab an object and the different movement types that we have, there are two more things that I want to show you in this video. First is the attach transform. When we grab an object, the object snaps to a certain position in our hand, but how can we edit this position? And the second thing is how can we use an object that we hold? So to answer both of these questions and kind of wrap up this video, I'm going to show you how to create a super simple pistol mechanism in VR. First, let's go to our project folder, pistol, and add the pistol in our scene. You can find a link to download the Unity package containing this pistol in the description below. I'm going to move this pistol on top of our table, now to grab it, we already know what to do. Make sure that it has some colliders. So I'm going to click on add component, search for boss collider and edit its size to fit the pistol model. Then we can add a rigid body and finally add the XR grab interactable. Now, if we click on play, as you can see, we can already grab it. Nice, but it snaps to a weird position. So to fix this issue, let's leave play mode, right click on the pistol and create an empty game object. Call it attach point and drag this game object in the attach transform parameter of the grab interactable. Now, last thing we need to do is set the attach point position and rotation. And for this, I have a little tips just for you. We can click on play again, grab the gun with one of our hand and still while holding it, edit the attach transform to what we need. So be careful, it moves to the opposite direction. And once you are happy with the position, we can copy the transform component leave play mode and pass the component value back on the attached transform. And now if we click on play again, it works by default. Perfect. Okay, so now that we learn how to snap to a good position, a grabbable object, let's learn how to use it by firing a bullet in our case. So to use a game object, we need to use here the activate event on this component. We could create our firing behavior separately and drag it in this event like we did earlier to change the cube color, but this time I want to show you how to link it by script. I'm going to select our pistol, click on add component and create a custom script called fire bullet on validate. Let's open this script. So in this script, we are going to need three public variables. First, the bullet game object we want to spawn called bullet, then the transform position where it will spawn, spawn point. 
And finally, the speed at which it will be shot, a float called fire speed that we can set at 20. Next, to use the validate event, we can access the XR grab interactable with first writing at the top using unity engine.xr.interaction.toolkit. Then do in the start function, XR grab interactable grabable equals get component of type XR grab interactable. And then add an event when we validate with grabable dot activate it dot add listener. And then the function name that will be triggered, let's say fire bullet. Now what's left is to create the fire bullet action. To do so, let's do public void fire bullet. But now that the function is created, it's still underlined in red here, which means an error in the code. This is because the function needs to have a parameter of type activate events args. So to add it, let's write in the parenthesis activate event args arg. And there you go, no more error. So this parameter is in fact useful to get some information about the interactor and the interactable, for example, but in our case, we don't need it. What we need is to spawn and put it. So for this, let's do game object spawn bullet equals instantiate bullet. So next we need to set the spawn position with spawn bullet dot transform dot position equals spawn point dot position. And finally add a certain speed to it with spawn bullet dot get component rigid body dot velocity equals spawn point dot forward multiply by fire speed. And here I'm setting the velocity of the rigid body to be in the direction of the forward axis of the spawn point that we will make. Last, we can destroy the blood after 5 seconds to not have too much of them in the scene with destroy spawn billet 5. Okay, let's save our script and go back to Unity. Perfect, so what's left is to set the parameter for the bullet. I'm going to create a new sphere in our scene, rename it bullet. Scale it to 0 0.03 on all axes. Add a rigid body. We don't want gravity on this, so let's uncheck gravity. And we can improve the collision detection by setting the collision detection to continuous dynamic. Now we can drag this game object in the project folder to store it. So that we can now remove it in the scene and drag it from the project windows to the bullet parameter in the fire bullet component. Last, for the spawn position, let's create an empty child of the pistol and place it at the end of the pistol a bit after the collider. Make sure here that the blue axis of this empty game object is facing out of the gun. Now next, we can drag this empty game object as well in the spawn point parameter of the fire bullet component. And now let's click on play to try this. There you go guys, it works. The gun is firing a bullet, but we have a super weird bug right now. The teleportation happens at the same time. So to fix this, we are going to disable the teleportation when we are grabbing an object. So let's go to the XR origin and open the activate teleportation ray that I showed before and add two input action property inside. One called left cancel and the other right cancel. Now what we can do is check that these two values are at zero if we want to enable teleportation. So let's do for the left end left cancel dot action dot read value float equals zero and so the double thing right there the stuff from before. This will make sure that we have the grid value at zero and that the trigger value above is above a certain threshold to enable the teleportation. What's left is to do now the same thing but for the right hand. Now let's save our script and go back to Unity. For both ends, I'm going to click on use reference and for the left console, use the left select. For the right console, now use the right select. Perfect, and now if I click on play, it finally works. Good job, no more issue, but maybe one. Just before finishing this tutorial, I want to cover a little bug that some of you might already add experiments during this video. When holding an object, sometimes it can collide with the character controller of the continuous movement. So to fix this, let's click on layer, add layer, add a player layer and an interactable layer select our XR origin and set its layer to player. Here, important, you have to say no to not set this layer on the children. Then we can select all of the interactable that we made, so the cube and the pistol in our case, and set the layer to interactable. This time we can say yes to set the layer of their children as well. And now we can remove the physics interaction between the player and the interactable layer by going to edit, project settings, physics, and here on the interaction matrix, 
disable where they cross. Perfect. And there you go, if we click on play, no more weird bug when holding an object. We have a beautiful application with grabbable object and even a pistol. How cool is that? Obviously, there are more to uncover, like how to grab an object but keep its initial offset, or even grab a far away object using a ray, but this will be for the next episode. There it is guys, thank you for watching till the end. As you can see, so much possibilities from here, but don't worry, I have still plenty of cool things to show you in the next episode. So make sure to subscribe, not miss them. A big shout out to all of my Patreon for supporting my work. And if like them, you want to have access to the source code of all of my projects plus exclusive content, join us. Link in the description. Bye bye.